over 30 years ago when Dr. Reams first started teaching large classes, he found that if the students would pick up a few basic rules that they could find, find it much easier to actually learn the RBTI process. So today we're going to review some of those rules. In the world of RBTI, the Reams Biological Theory of Ionization, energy comes when anions and cations start clashing. It's almost like two spinning wheels grinding against each other and sparks fly off. That energy that flies off is what humans live on. Well, any animals live on. Over and over you will hear, hear experienced practitioners say, gee, the people I get that have if what seem like perfect numbers when they first start, those always turn out to be the sickest people. It's, it's like the body has given up. It doesn't, um, it, it hasn't adopted a stance. So when you see a test, a first test with numbers that look very, very good, expect a lot of trouble. No number is perfect unless all numbers are perfect. This is again a basic rule and what you'll find is that well, what someone may look to, to or appear to have perfect numbers and yet their um, cell debris might be way too high. Well that's telling you that those other numbers are not good. The amount of sugar that is found in any fruit, vegetable or crop is directly proportional, proportional to the amount of available phosphate in the soil. Phosphate controls sugar formation in plants. So this is just a basic part of Brick's theory. Many, 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 many times you will hear Dr. Reams say it's safest to have a very wide variety in your diet. That's because your body needs many minerals and you won't necessarily get them all out of any particular food unless of course that's super high quality food which is impossible to find anymore. But if you will widen your diet and start eating things that you may have never even heard of, uh, fruits and vegetables that are uh, not so common, it, 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 there are minerals in there that your body will be able to get and this is important. Almost like the uh, psychiatrist who finds that he has to probe and probe and probe before somebody can first give a tear or first tell a story of of the abuse they've suffered. Uh, the body that takes a long time to respond to that first withdrawal. Uh, withdrawal is where the liver is flushing. You, you'll throw up. You'll think you're very, very sick. Think you're dying. But what's happening is your body is throwing out all those old stored stagnant bile that's in your liver and getting a fresh start. And ultimately this is a very good thing. So once you get through that first withdrawal and understand that you're getting well, not getting sicker, uh, you'll start being a very happy camper. This next, this once you know the frequency, then you know the diet, is a very confusing maxim to most people. But basically it means that if you've got some animal or a person and you can identify what their basic cellular frequency is, then you can get a pretty good idea of what they need to live. The RBTI concept is based on the human body needing many minerals, abundant minerals, and it uses these to build good tissue, healthy tissue. And what they found is if you can get better food, higher quality food, which until you understand Brick's theory you won't know what higher quality food is but once you do you'll realize that as you find better and higher quality food your need for supplements will decrease you just won't need as many because it'll be coming to you in your food medical practice and RBTI both understand that when you get out in the sun you get more absorption of sun and that helps your vitamin D situation in your body. But what they found is the darker people, those with heavy tans, uh, those of darker races, 
tend to pick up um, more vitamin D and they can have a heavier diet, a more solid diet and deal with it very easily. Dr. Reams had much to say about blood and blood circulation. One point is that if you have 4,500 parts per million of, blood, of vitamin C in your blood, there'll be no disease present. There's enough vitamin C to just basically keep disease out. And another was that as you get your numbers more and more and closer to perfect, the blood circulation will get better and that blood improved blood circulation will go into old lesions and adhesions in your body and start cleaning them out. And this is a very good thing. Reams also talked much about how improving one's general body health improves their mind. It improves the circulation in their brain and a lot of the problems that, that most people think are normal to old age will start melting away. The RBTI talks about energy, how we have to have energy to live on. That's divided into two parts. That's our ordinary energy we might use to move around the house or do our chores or go places. But the other, the energy that runs the organs, that runs the body, that keeps things working just perfectly, is known as our, our, our reserve energy. And although difficult to calculate, the anytime you see your numbers moving away from perfect you're losing reserve energy and you're heading towards illness uh, he found that as you got around 30 percent reserve energy doctors could start picking up diseases anywhere above that they had a hard time but there's your point eating wrong doing not resting enough um, bad thoughts any of these things can run your reserve energy down. Over and over you will hear, hear practitioners say that somebody will start RBTI because they've got some problems, some serious problems, and for whatever reason they won't continue it, and when they stop, woo, here comes that old problem back in full force and fury. This so-called rule, the sicker the person the more strict they must be with the program, it's just common sense. If you have a huge amount of reserve energy, well, you can you can work the program and improve yourself, but you won't have to do a lot to get it to improving. But if you're puny on the low end of things, you've got to you've got to live strictly, right by the rules. This is another common sense RBTI rule, which says basically, if you do hard hard work you're going to have to eat a heavier diet. You've got to get that energy and that's where it comes from. Another basic rule that ties back to the BRICS theory is that the higher the specific gravity of any fruit or vegetable, the higher will be the sugar content. And once that sugar content is up, it's carrying minerals in, on it, piggyback, riding them right into your body. And as you get those higher minerals, then you'll find that that food is far better for your health. In the RBTI world, it's well known that if you take magnesium, it's going to force out the nitrogen compounds in your body. It's going to adversely impact them. One of the impacts is that if your body is has very low urea, when it should have higher urea, and you give dolomite to somebody, it will push that down and the uh, that low urea condition is known as a 220. So it's this is a minor rule, but it just says don't be giving out dolomite to somebody if, if they are already a 220. Reams made much of this rule. Nature will always follow the line of least resistance. Now, it's very simple if you think of a chain which breaks at its weakest point all the time. It will never happen any other way. But if you also think of, say, water running down a hill and here's a big rock or a tree in its way, it doesn't run, a, run down and go up the tree and over 
although it might have enough force to do so, actually what it'll do is flow under the tree or around its roots or around it. And this is true at the subatomic level, this is true at the macro level. Uh, nature, this is one of the rules. You can always count on nature taking the line of least resistance. Anytime you force the numbers, force, that's the key word here, force the numbers to move, you should expect a loss of energy. What you're doing is forcing the body, whether you do it with supplements, with drugs, or whatever, you're forcing the body to change its normal position to deal with whatever you're giving it. So an overdose of herbs or minerals or vitamins or drugs or whatever is going to cause the body to have to expend extra energy to deal with it. One of the classic cases is when people take these cheap bee bucks, they find their urine turned bright yellow or bright orange. And that's because the body is being forced to get those toxic matters out. They may be called vitamins, and that does not mean that the body recognizes them as such. This rule, a change in one number is a change in all numbers, can be equated back to the one to the rule that says that no number is perfect unless all numbers are perfect. Um, the RBTI is not single factor analysis. It requires you to look at all numbers together and to study the relationships between them. One of the more basic rules is that there is a certain ratio between salts and sugars that you should always be, um, be concerned about to be sure that it's in that correct ratio. This is an interesting rule that Reams put great for great faith in, and yet in today's world it's very hard to understand it except merely to um, accept it as it is. And basically he said all elementary atoms under the same temperature and pressure are the same size. And not everybody can grasp just what this means. So it, it's a, a murky area, but again, Reams put much faith in it taught it to every class that he taught. We're back to common sense again. The weaker the gastric juice, the less able the body to extract from the diet those minerals with a higher specific gravity. Some minerals, very lightweight minerals, um, even a weak person can get out of the diet very easily, but when you start talking about iron and manganese and iodine and these very important minerals, if you don't have that gastric juice strong and keep it strong, you will, no matter what you eat, you're not going to be able to pull out of it what you need. So you have to be worried at all times about keeping the pH, the liver bile pH, the urine pH. Keep those things right where they're supposed to be so you've got maximum gastric strength. This is a simple rule that will tie into another. A body cannot be anionic one day, cationic the next. Um, what that's saying is, is if you're doing rather frequent testing and you get uh, very alkaline numbers one day and very acid the next, you probably need to look at your testing. The um, body simply can't shift that quick. It will shift slowly but steadily, but not just flip-flop day to day. One of the first things newcomers to RBTI find out is that their numbers just seem to bounce all over the place. And that's because the mineral array in their body is very puny, very weak. They will find as they start taking minerals and building the body up with the basic calcium and phosphate that they numbers will start stabilizing. Now they will stabilize in the weak direction that your body is in and that will give you the guidance you need to, to which mineral to increase and which mineral to decrease. But you have to be concerned about this bouncing around when you first get started because it, it's very annoying. It, it'll make you think something's wrong and what it means is there's just not enough energy in the body to hold the numbers steady. Another aspect of the BRICS theory 
very simple and you can read it from left to right. You get a drop out of, the, of juice out of that produce, you put it on a refractometer, you look and see what you see in the screen and the higher that number, the better quality, the more minerals you'll have in that particular food. Many people like to argue with Reams about, they, well, let's put it this way, they were raised to believe that opposites attract in the molecular and atomic world. Reams always pointed out how metals such as gold and silver and other metals are found in veins. And if, if the uh, standard molecular or atomic theory was correct, uh, those veins would disperse. But because metals collect, tend to collect, he, he made a very good case that like attracts like and he applied it to many parts of his uh, Reams biological theory of ionization. This simple little rule drives a lot of people crazy in RBTI. All it's saying is that every food that Reams ever tested was cationic and the only food, the only exception he found was the lemon. Um, some people think that that's because lemon doesn't have any sulfur in it, but um, he stood by that rule and nobody's ever found an exception yet. One of the more basic tenets of RBTI is that all disease is the result of a mineral deficiency. Without fail, you'll find as the minerals go down, disease will go up. And conversely, you'll find as minerals go up, disease goes down, never fails. The number one rule in RBTI, always go by the numbers. You'll hear it said over and over, go by the numbers. If your equation numbers are out of whack, there's where you focus on. That's how you make it right. Always go by the numbers. You always go by the numbers. Yes, you always go by the numbers. That's how you can help heal. RBTI is a simple process if you go by the numbers. In case you didn't hear me say it earlier, do go by the numbers. That is the rule for RBTI. Don't forget it. Go by those numbers. The RBTI allows room for miracles. Reams himself was healed by a miracle with the uh, Catherine Coleman healing. But these instruments cannot measure the grace of God. There will be times that you'll be absolutely sure somebody's getting ready to die and the grace of God will step in and it'll go a different direction. So you can't measure what God will do with these instruments. There's always hope and there's always prayer. Standard medical practice seems to think that if you have allergy to a food that you will always react to that food and that you will never change. But RBTI sees allergy differently. They see that if you take a food in and it kicks your numbers out of gear, moves them further away from perfect, that, that means you have an allergy to that food. However, as your mineral array in your body changes, you'll find certain foods that once caused trouble will no longer cause trouble. At that point you can reintroduce them into the diet. Earlier we had a rule that said that if you uh, don't, if you have a problem try to use RBTI to deal with it and then abandon RBTI you'll find that it comes back on you like wildfire. Well, one of the rules that tie to that rule is that it's better really never to start RBTI if you're going to start it and then abandon it. That, that kind of makes you lose reserve energy all on its own to, to, for the body to get, get where it's anticipating a certain healing and then it gets cut off at the pass. So most people that start the RBTI then stop it, they find that ultimately they they have not done themselves a service. It's, it's not a good thing at all.